What if I told you that every player in this team is going to be a version of a playmaker? What? That's right, every outfield player will be some sort of playmaker. The results might surprise you a little bit. We might even end up with something quite ridiculous. I'm about to start the video, honest. So ask yourself this, if you were to do this, what would you line it up like? What roles would you go for? What sort of shape would you go for? So the first one I went for was a classic 4-2-3-1, just to get all the players in. Now you can see the front positions. We've got two APs, an Angonch, any excuse to chuck one of them in there, a DLP and an RPM. Gone for complete forward up front, because that's kind of an all-round role. And when you look at it, it's probably the best option. It was either that or Trequatista, but it does say that it fashions chances for others and you know gets involved, so it's probably a little bit more like a playmaker than the others. In defence is where it gets funky. Double liberos, double complete wing-backs. I don't think there's any argument there. As you might expect in match, it looks kind of funky. We've got Rodri playing as a libero next to Ruben Diaz, and absolutely nobody in our half. It's pretty much like City playing away, you know? See all the roaming going on? There's everybody up there. There's absolutely no respect for the opposition. I mean, this is Juventus as well. This is a complete wing-back getting forward, and he lays it on. I mean, that's a lovely team goal. And that's probably the most standard type of formation we can do, and obviously City absolutely blasted it. And top of the league, and no surprise, because it's City. Let's transfer it across to Braga in Portugal. There it is lined up for them, you can see the double liberos, and then you've got your advanced playmakers either side, with the Gonch kind of chilling in there. And there's the two central midfield, pivot of a DLP and an RPM. And it did alright as far as the season goes, they finished fourth, which is pretty much where they're expected to finish behind the big three. But they did lose 10 times, which is too many for my liking. And they didn't have a great time in the Cups either. This game against Leon in the Cup kind of shows the positives and negatives of this tactic. 5-5. Five, five. Check it, folks. This is us when we've got the ball. And because we've got so many players who want the ball, everybody wants it, including our two liberos. They don't care about defending. Then everybody else is drifting all over the place. The only guys that kind of stay where they want to be is the complete wingbacks. They do stay a little bit wider, thankfully. But everybody else, including those two liberos just takes it as a free roll but some of the football they're playing is wonderful but on the flip side in the second leg when we defend they're a bit like headless chickens and we got murdered 6-2 to go out 11-7 on aggregate <laughs> there were other highlights though like the beat porto 2-1 and pretty much dominated the match this is a more standard formation than you might think when we've got the ball it does get expressive look at that everybody's roaming around everywhere however without the ball they do get back into a decent shape so your overall position is still a kind of structured shape, unlike the version I'm about to show you. I'd like to take this chance to apologise. And this one, friends, is right up my street. Right up my street. So I tested it first with City because thanks to Pep, they're used to trying crazy stuff. And as you can see, we've got playmakers dotted around everywhere. We've got our double liberos and our wingbacks. That's pretty standard. And that's where the standardness stops. Rodri's got a lot of work to do as a DLP. Then we've got double wide playmakers, another wider playmaker higher up, De Bruyne as an Angonch, and the striker as a complete forward. Now in the Community Shield, it completely blasted through United. Yes, it's City, but that is complete domination. And this goal is absolutely wild and sums things up. This is from a 6-2 win away at Bologna in the Champs League and wait till you see the movement of this. So we've got Stones and Diaz as our liberos. Now we pause it there. Nobody defending because nobody cares, but just watch all of these players. They don't care. They're just going to bomb forward because all of them want the ball. Walker's got it here. Now watch as we engulf the box. Have you seen anything like that before? There's only one man on the outside of the box and that's Jao Cancelo. Unsurprisingly, you can get caught on the break, as Liverpool showed here in a game that City had more shots in. I mean, even my goalkeeper wants to be a playmaker. Look how far out he is, and then he just passes it to Salah. So, yeah, massive error. And the problem when you've got all these players, specifically the Barrows, wanting the ball, all these players want the ball, right? So they're all going towards the ball. You can see that. They're all looking at the ball. They're not attacking space. So when you lose it, pause. That's Diaz, Libero. Stones, Libero, you may notice that Mr. Darwin Nunes is completely free. So when we lose it, he has a 50-yard run at goal. Now, despite that, City have started to get into it and have won about 55 times in a row. But it's all well and good at being City. Let's try it over at Braga. 
at the midpoint of the season, that should give you a good insight into how it's going. Some right random link-ups going on. This is against one of the big three in Sporting. As soon as we get the ball high up, you can see that all of our players have sprinted into their half. We don't care about defending, they just want the ball. Everyone thirsty, thirsty for the ball. And to be fair, this does end up being a goal purely down to the amount of options that we have. Now what's funny is when you play against a good team, they're inclined to take more risks against you. If I pause it there, you can see we've got all our players wanting the ball, so therefore going to where the ball is in the final third and we've got two players up front waiting for it now there's two ways of looking at this if we lose the ball we are in the mud however if two players are up there that means somebody's going to be free in our playmakers they want the ball they're free and invariably it's these guys on the edge and they're the ones who create this goal and that gives a 95th minute against one of the big three as you saw earlier we went away to roma and beat them so this tactic definitely does have legs and in the League Cup semi-final, we beat another of the big boys in Benfica. And this led to us winning a trophy with the Playmaker Tactic. If I pause it there, you can see the amount of players on the edge of the box. Basically all of them, and this was the winning goal. I mean, at least they're close to celebrate. And we finished the season where we should be, really. Best of the rest, but a lot better than our first performance. I mean, it's like this. We finished fourth, but look at the teams above us. Scoring 100 times, only conceded 19. Best of the rest is a bit of a result. Especially when you're playing that tactic, but look at the chemistry link-ups. A lot of games against the lower teams, you will absolutely dominate teams. 65% possession, shots all over the place. And quite often your pass map will look like this. It's a kind of thing of beauty, that. So you've seen the positives and you've seen the minuses. However, check this out with the ball. That's with the ball. Remember, number 23 is your striker, not your defender. You can see how high up you go because they just all want the ball. When you don't have the ball, they do drop into some sort of shape. Overall, you're looking a bit like that. So it's possible, it's possible to get a bit of success, but the problem you've got is all playmakers, they all want the ball. So they're all gonna to go towards the ball. So some guys are gonna get lost in the shuffle. In this formation, it was the attacking midfielder, the Ongonch. He didn't have the greatest time. Three goals, four assists, the poor average rating, kind of getting bypassed by everybody else. And that makes sense if you think that player role there just kind of sticks to his position. But when he's sticking to his position, everybody else, including the defenders for God's sake, are all flying up around him. So to get the best of both worlds, that would be a great place to put a shadow striker because he would just benefit from all these players laying on passes. So you've got two versions there. You've got the beautiful version that I absolutely love, which most people will hear, and you've got the standard version. Question to you is, what would you do? Would you go for a box? A box setup could be quite nice with these guys popping inside there like that and just allow the wing backs to have the space. In fact, I probably should have done that one. 